Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will study about equivalent circuit of transformer. And this is from Mr. Chapman's book of electrical machines. Now, the equivalent circuit of a transformer, when we try to model this, we have to take into account the losses. The losses that occur in a real transformers have to be accounted for in any accurate model of transformer behavior. And what are the causes for uh, these losses? They are the copper loss, or also called I square R loss. Then we have eddy current losses, we have hysteresis losses, and we have losses due to leakage flux. Now I'll not go into the details. Uh, you can read from the book this is given so i'll just read uh, uh, the important points so this is the equivalent circuit for this transformer and you can see there's a resistive element reactive elements in series then we have elements in parallel we have also elements in series on the secondary side now the copper losses can be modeled by resistance RP and RS as has been shown here. Uh, copper losses are mainly um, they generate heat, resistive losses. Then the leakage flux effects can be modeled by XP and XS. So these in series are the effect of uh, leakage flux. Then the core loss can be modeled by RC in parallel, so this is the core loss in parallel, and then core excitation effect can be modeled by XM, so this is due to the core excitation, so these are uh, the eddy current and hysteresis losses combination. Now, although this figure 216 is an accurate model of a transformer, it is not a very useful one. Why? Because to analyze practical circuits containing transformers, it is normally necessary to convert the entire circuit to an equivalent circuit at a single voltage level. Now if you see the voltage here in the secondary side is different from the voltage in the primary side. So we are talking of two voltage levels here. So for solving we want to convert them to a single voltage level and let's see how that is done. Therefore, the equivalent circuit must be referred to either the primary side or to its secondary side in the problem. So, we one option is that we ref, reflect this into the primary side. Reflect this means what is whatever is the effect of this transformer, uh, this uh, secondary side, we'll uh, show it on the primary side. And similarly, if you want to reflect the primary side on the secondary side, then its effect will be shown here and uh, let's see from the and the next slide okay now you see this was the circuit that the ideal circuit we had got this is this the secondary side has been reflected to the primary because we are multiplying the secondary resistance and reactance by the transformer turn ratio a square uh, and transformer turn ratio you know np uh, over an S is equal to A. So we multiply that so everything has now been transformed onto the primary side. Similarly if you want to reflect the primary on the secondary side then we have to divide these with A square and this will be the equivalent circuit uh, for at the secondary side. So we'll primarily uh, will be using this one so let's proceed with this. Now, in some applications, the excitation branch, that is the left-hand side of the circuit that we saw, may be neglected entirely. So, this left-hand side may be neglected entirely without causing serious error. Now, in these cases, the equivalent circuit of the transformer reduces to a simple circuit shown in figure. So, now, if we neglect this, then you can see this is what is left. So, this is what is left here. But this is our equivalent circuit, simplified equivalent circuit, referred to the primary side. 
and similarly um, we can refer it uh, the the second side uh, also could be reduced by neglecting this part so this will be the one referred to the second side again uh, we'll solve a problem by using the primary side so let's proceed to that now we need to determine the values of the components and the model of these values So it is possible to experimentally determine the values of the inductances and resistances in the transformer model with only two sets of tests. Number one is the open circuit test and the other is the short circuit test. So let's see what is uh, open circuit and short circuit. So in the open circuit test we do not connect any load at the secondary side and we have connected an am ampere meter and a volt meter here. So we measure the current and the voltage and you can see we have, uh, with this we will be able to find out the parallel components. So RC and XM can be calculated in this by this method and since they are in parallel we can write them to be as an admittance YE which is equal to 1 over RC minus 1 over uh, minus j over xm and also ye from here this whole thing we are calling ye the parallel thing is actually current divided by voltage with the current has an angle negative we know already because the load is inductive and so this can be written as ioc over voc minus cos inverse power factor because theta is uh, cos inverse power factor. So the, these were the parallel components. For series components we have to perform the short circuit test where the output is shorted. And again we note down the current and voltage readings. So the parallel uh, series components R equivalent and X equivalent can be calculated. Uh, we know the sum of them are the Z equivalent or ZSC. So ZSC is the voltage divided by current V short circuit, this one, and I short circuit the current noted. And since I has a uh, is lagging, so we'll put a negative sign. From there we can write like this, and from there this equation. So these are the two equations that we'll use uh, to find or calculate the values. So let's see an example now. So here is an example. The equivalent circuit impedance of a 20 kVA, 8000 by 240 volt, 60 hertz transformer are to be determined. The open circuit test and the short circuit test were performed on the primary side of the transformer and the following data were taken. So these were the uh, results for the open circuit and short circuit test. Find the impedance of the approximate equivalent circuit. So keep in mind we have to use the approximate model, refer to the primary side and sketch the circuit or find the value of the components actually. So this model we will be using, this is referred to the primary side and this is the simplified uh, or approximation equivalent model. So we have to calculate RC, XM and R equivalent and X equivalent. So we now have already derived all the formulas, so we will just plug in those values. These were for the uh, admittance components and as we have uh, we know that P is VI cos theta so from here the, we can calculate cos theta which is power factor so power factor is cos theta is equal to power divided by voltage into current we know all these values from here this is wrong it should be POC so 400 watt divided by the voltage divided by the current from the open circuit test so this is the power factor lagging so we have found the power factor and now we can using this formula we will find ye so ye is io over voc 
plugging in the values of power factor lagging here so we get this angle solving this or making uh, writing it in rectangular form so this is the real part which is equal to 1 over rc and this is imaginary part which is equal to 1 over xm and from here rc can be found to be 1 over this value that we got here, here which is equal to 159 kilo and similarly xm is 1 over the value that we got from here so it is 38.4 kilo ohms okay now we um, are going to calculate the second part that these uh, components in series and we have already studied this how to find out zsc so we'll simply plug in the values from the short circuit test we calculate the power factor which is cos theta which is power divided by voltage into current so plugging in we first of all get the power factor which is 0 0.196 and now we'll find zsc by using this formula so zsc is vsc over isc cos inverse power factor and plugging in the values this power factor when we plug in take cos inverse it will be 78.7 so when we convert the value into rectangular form we get these two and this is the real part and this is imaginary part and so we can say that the real part is equal to this one or the r equivalent is equal to 38.4 and x equivalent is equal to the imaginary part 192 so now we have all the four values so simply plug in the values for the parallel and series components uh, to get the completed design. I hope this gives you an understanding how you can easily solve this type of a circuit. Thank you.